now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Big red letters. That's Alex. That's me, the Ramble. That's the program. And we're here until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States, uh, coming your way. Um, and uh, we'll uh, get to a citizens panel in uh, just a little bit. But first, we have to go over... And uh, first, we've got to admit him, okay, and then, um, uh, let me see here, wait a minute, I'm, uh, there we go, okay, and you do that like you were on a roller coaster. Hands in the air. Hands in the air, <laughs> right. Hello, that's Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen, we talk with him once a week, because... He does, he, he, talking he, to me four times a week. <laughs> well, you know, we miss you, you know, on the show. I yeah, think, well, I think some people do. I mean, I, I, um, I thought that I caused too much angst for you, and I felt that uh, you know the show would be better off without me. Well, I mean, that's for you to determine, uh, for me to determine, not you. Oh, you know. well, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but. Um, Anyway, this uh, seems to be a good medium. Hey, uh, today mm -hmm. I uh, was. Uh, there's a couple things in the news we we can get to just talk a about. few, yeah. Just a couple. But uh, yeah, today I had uh, cigars with uh, one of your fans, uh, Paul Young, mm -hmm. uh, and he writes a, a lot on the uh, chat room. Mm -hmm. Really good guy, and uh, Brian met him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to uh, uh, that uh, comedy thing with Larry Brown. Uh, what comedy thing? Larry that Brown. was when he made his recording. Oh. So Brian and I and Paul and one of his friends mm -hmm. uh, 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 was was at the uh, recording. But, he, but that was a long time ago, though. Yeah. Well, I'm just mentioning that, you know, that's when he met Brian. But, okay. Uh, but then when did you have cigars? Today. Today, uh, with who? With Paul. With Paul. Okay. You're confusing right. me. It sounded like you had him with Paul and Brian, and you were watching. Uh, uh, they, you no, know. They, they met earlier. But uh, uh, Brian, uh, Paul is one of your biggest fans. You know, mm -hmm. he's uh, he's a real fan of the comedy scene and, and, a, and a good guy. Yeah, and, uh, he is. So, uh, but I, I just come off a three-day juice fast. Oh, God. I lost, no. I lost six pounds. He lost six pounds. Spit in the fucking ocean. I well, uh, uh, no, let me let me let me not try let me not try to make you feel bad about it because really you know good for you bravo okay well my my numbers my diabetes numbers came down every everything is uh, is good blood pressure down and the juice fast is a really good way to do it but three days was was all I could do yeah. of just juice. And so uh, today I had uh, iceberg lettuce. I was, uh, you know, getting really daring. And, well, that's uh, but good. I, that's good. You fun. know, I find I can't lose weight. I'll tell you why. I, uh, I started taking these pills for my neuropathy called... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Is that the gabapentin? Gab no, well, actually, it's a form of gabapentin. It's called... Uh, it's called... I uh, keep forgetting the name heroin. of it. Heroin. Uh, it's called uh, heroin. It's called heroin. Yeah, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where is it? Where? Oh, hell. I can't. I can't find it now. I lost it. It was ah. here somewhere. Hold on a second. Let me yeah. just go over here. Yeah. Um, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here, 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 here. Here's the bottle right there. Uh, oh, and okay. it's uh, pregabalin. I should okay. remember that because that's very much a Jerry Lewis word. Yeah, but okay, it, it also has something to do with there gabnet. There we go, mm. pregabalin. Well, it, you know, gabnet, pregabalin. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Let me put my earphones back on, otherwise I can't hear you. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So anyway, it's pregabalin, and uh, it has a tendency to put weight on you. It, it, well, because because it, it it screws with your metabolism. Ah. Well, you let know. me try this. Mm -hmm. Pregabalin. Pregabalin. <laughs> pregabalin. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, 
let's see what else. Oh, so this new health kick. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, yeah. I just, we can do an by the way, By the way, I can clock your health kicks. Yeah, yeah, how's that? Oh, yeah, well. Yeah, you know, I mean, come on, you always go on them, and then, then all of a sudden you're not on them anymore. Well, oh, you, oh, you uh, got a Fitbit. Oh, boy. The, you know what that is? Me. You know what that is? That's wishful thinking. Yeah. You put a Fitbit on, and you go, wow, I'm going to be fit, and I'm going to do it in quite a, a bit. bit. You know. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, you, of course, if you got an Apple Watch, you could do probably the same thing. Well, yes, I could. It's just that... Um, uh, I, I didn't I didn't want to be connected on the watch to the cell phone and 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 all of that. You don't have to be connected to the cell phone. Yeah. Well, no, because it, these now these now this one for an extra fifteen bucks a month to the phone company. Uh, yeah. This phone I can just take out with me. I don't need the iPhone. I can make calls with it. I can uh, you know go on the internet with it. Everything. Well, so. maybe uh, uh, you know I have a I have a friend that lives in Detroit. Yeah. He's in the radio business, and he has been walking 10,000 steps per day. Uh, he's a little OCD. and uh, I can't walk 20. I mean, I'm just so out of shape, it's ridiculous. You know? Me too. Me too. And the uh, bottom of my feet are killing me because of the, of the neuropathy. And I just, I, I, I think about walking even like, five blocks that way i went the other day i actually did 10 15 blocks wow. uh, but uh today i said i'm gonna go do it again today and then i never got out of the house yeah well uh at least this way uh, i've always been told what can be measured can be managed and what can be managed can be improved mm -hmm. so my cardiologist said that i should walk and so if i could measure my walking, uh, mm -hmm. I could well, see. What I, I mean, I could do. A, I, I was doing a lot of walking before when I was losing all that weight, but the weather was better, and there wasn't yeah. COVID lurking out there. You know, yeah. I'll, I got to say something. You know, as, as much as I tell everybody wear a mask, really, when you want to go for a walk, it is mm -hmm. no fun doing it with a mask. Yeah, to begin with, there with, there are two I'm, two elements to this. Number one, yeah. it's harder for you to breathe. Right. Okay. And secondly, you build up snot. <laughs> really. It's not what you think it is. And eventually, the inside of your mask is like a bacteria breeding ground, for crying out loud. You wash them every day? I don't wash them. We got enough that I just, when they, now, when they get a little funky, I just throw them away. Well, I have about a dozen of those comfort masks, like mm -hmm. the one that you bought from Yeah, those are, those are, it, it, it doesn't do it for me. Doesn't no. do it for me. Yeah, they're comfort masks, but the question is whether they do anything. Well, they're there to stop your spittle from hitting someone else. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's you know, unless you wear an N95, yeah. it's not going to stop anything from coming in. Well, no, and uh, the regular ones, the surgical masks, will keep stuff from coming in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and uh, you know, as, and and the reason I I replace them a lot is because I want to be a tight fit on the side. And as yeah. you wear them over and over and over again, you the fit gets loose. But, you know, we've got a problem again here in New York City uh, where it's uh, it's not so good, you know. And uh, and our governor can't do anything about it because, uh, well, every t as somebody wrote the other day, and it's absolutely true, every time somebody accuses him of sexual improprieties, Mm -hmm. um uh the age limit goes down five years yeah <laughs> but he's we're now down right. we're down to 50 years anybody over 50 can get it now yeah mm -hmm. oh oh can get the vaccine yeah yeah well that's good well yeah if the vaccine's available uh you know i mean we still have a limited supply you got to remember we don't have this vast un quenchable you know this vast uh, inexhaustible supply out there it's pretty bad astrovenica astrovenica has astrazeneca yeah and uh zeneca whatever uh uh and uh anyway well, don't uh, count so, on astrazeneca anytime soon no uh because i thought they were uh, give, being given clearance yeah and today it turned out a lot of the the data they've been giving the uh, cdc or the fda or whoever has to prove this thing has been false data. Oh, yeah, it's been uh, all, it's been outdated data, is what it is. I see. 
And, uh, and, yeah. uh, people are getting the Johnson and Johnson now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, uh, somebody, uh, told me today that they were getting the shot and they were, uh, it's the one dose. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, that, that's fine too. You know, they also say that there's somebody who has one company who claims they're coming out with a oral version. Yeah. So that would be good too. You know, oh, so so. I'll give you oral when, uh, yeah, when, give you oral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, who doesn't like a little oral now and then? Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, coming back from uh, uh, Paul's get together, mm-hmm. uh, I got I got back here ten minutes ago. Uh, it was it was really tight. The traffic on the Bay Bridge was bumper to bumper. Why is that? I thought everything was loosened up quite a bit. They say even yeah. even though uh, some things have been relaxed, that there don't seem to be as many people on the roads as there were. Well, it, it um, I left at a quarter to six mm-hmm. and i got home at 7 20 something wow uh, and uh it, all the traffic was on that central freeway bumper hmm. to bumper uh i was thinking that i was going to have to do this from my cell phone hmm. you know? uh, so anyway yeah uh, health wise i have to do uh something about uh the, the walking you know when i went shooting last sunday Mm-hmm. Uh, we, they did. By the some... way, by the way, just so people know, this guy does two kinds of shooting. Oh, cameras and, uh, and guns. guns. Yeah. I mean, well, this was guns. Yeah. And part of the training was weaponless defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they they had a guy who does this karate stuff. Yeah. You, know, you know, hey, I got a friend who does karate. You better better look out. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, they they put their hands up in the air and I'm uh, with these pads and I had to hit them for about 30 seconds with a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. And you were out of breath. I was not only out of breath. My friend is also an EMT. He gave me oxygen. <laughs> I, I, I was I was I was so uh, I, I went back to my car and I'm sitting on the bumper and I, you, you know, you folks, know, I, you know, I, I you wonder why we have nothing but old listeners to this show. Yeah. Right. Uh, what do we complain about? This is the kind of crap we're complaining about. Well, I, I, I was on the oxygen for 15 minutes and then I felt great. But uh, what that showed me was how out of shape I really am. If I can't go 30 seconds uh, of, uh, of high energy uh, exertion, mm-hmm. uh, that that's not good. So it's not uh, good. no, I mean, I don't get a, I, the only thing that gets me out of breath is wearing the mask. If I take the mask off, I'm okay. But it's also the bottom of my feet are hurting because of the neuropathy, and um, you know I just have to get back to walking. I haven't I haven't walked in a year. Okay, yeah. you know I walked a couple of times a week to go to the store and back, but that was about it. And for the first four months or so, you remember I didn't even leave the house. What about that uh, machine you hang your wet towels on? Yeah, yeah. You mean my wife's uh, cycle? Right. Yeah, uh, I like watching her on it. I get a lot of exercise watching her do it. She I, says, "I just did an hour and a half on this thing." I went, "Good for you." You used know? to do that almost every day. You know, I mean, if if I'm going to do a bike, I'm going to get a real one, and go places and see things. Yeah, uh, well, but you know, the only the only uh, 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 scenery that I see is on this screen in front of me. Yeah, yeah, and the guy's yelling at you. You can no, do it. No, I'm not. Push I don't. Through. I don't go with any of those people. I find them too intimidating. I don't need somebody going. Okay, let's pedal a little faster. Come on, you know. And he's like, "Okay, now fuck you." Yeah, now now push you it. Know, but, you know, uh, I'll I'll just get on, do 15 minutes, and get off. Okay. Uh, you said that the unless the, that woman on that screen is naked and her tits are bobbing up and down. Oh, excuse me, am I being sexist? Our tits are bobbing up and down. I'm I don't have any interest. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you might be able to get that. Just put in a different feed. It could be Peloton should have like a, a porn uh, division. Okay, <laughs> where you yeah. could do a can porn you workout. Your phone or your Bluetooth to uh, channel. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. X, X, X. They, they they've got that uh, they've got that whole uh, thing the Peloton so locked in that they're the ones who control everything on it, even so though you, even uh, though it is Android operated, 
But if they've got a bunch of things where you just, you, there are some things, some hacks you can do to it and watch some things. But, so, you know. Therefore, if you don't pay the monthly fee, something comes across the screen that says uh, your account is uh, suspended? No, nothing comes across the screen. Are you kidding yeah. me? You go out, you buy this thing for $2,500, and then you got to pay like 30 bucks a month to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Otherwise, you've just got a brick sitting in the corner. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. uh, let's see. What so else? anyway, I want to ask you. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. How many? Eight, 18 people dead in the last, what, six, seven days, something like that? Yeah. Let's see. There was Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The Atlanta was the Chinese or the Oriental. Uh, it, 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 Oriental is not a term anymore, Phil. It's Asian. Oh, no. It's Asian. 1950. Asian. It, it, it's Asian. Uh, ornamental. Or, the ornamental. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, what's happened is, and, and it's that the government has failed us in uh, in, in addressing people with mental health issues. Now, wait a minute. What, the current administration or the old one? All, all administrations. Okay. Because uh, uh, this guy's only been in office for six weeks. You can't blame uh, a hell of a lot. I'll, of I'll blame Biden for other stuff mm -hmm. uh, down at the border. Uh, you know, there's... It's uh, not his fault down there either. I mean... Well, it, no, it's, I'll expose... Uh, it's Irv Jackson's fault. It's who? Uh, it's Irv Jackson's fault? Yeah, because you mean, you mean uh, Jack Bishop's fault. Jack Bishop, because yeah. uh, the uh, the town that they're uh, that is having all the problems is called Donna, Texas. Now, Donna isn't Texas. his wife's name Donna? Her name is Donna. It was named after her. It's her town. She owns it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, any, any, anyway, back to the guns for for a minute. First, the guns. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am of the opinion that if you're a law-abiding citizen, you're not out there shooting We're the place not up. worried about the law-abiding citizens. We're but worried that, about the non-law-abiding citizens who have access to these guns. It's the law-abiding citizens that are having their rights taken Phil, away. Phil, assault, assault weapons? Come on. Well, uh, hey, if, if you uh, buy a gun and you don't have a gun safe and you have to prove it. No, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Back off. To yeah. begin with, you're dealing with here. You, for instance, this guy who's suspected. Uh, they say he pretty well was a mental case. He really yeah. was off his rocker. Well, you got to be off your rocker anyway to go in and kill a bunch of people. But you know, okay. the FBI was on to this guy. Okay, but all right. But the point that I'm making here is that I don't think we need these assault weapons. I don't think we need them at all. What do you need? You don't even need them. I I have one and I like it. But it's, Why, what do you like so, about it? Do you like shooting it at, at the wall there, or what? What do you do with the thing? Well, uh, sometimes uh, I could shoot him. Uh, the uh, oh, he, he's a target. He, yeah. He's a, uh, a a healable target. Yeah. Well, any anyway, the the thing about what they call assault weapons is that they're no different than a lot of other guns on the market, except they look scary. They, uh, wait, they a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, somehow a, a pistol looks a lot different than a rifle. Yes, but, you know, these rifles you can... And they have two entirely different uh, 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 reasons for existence, you know? Not necessarily. You see, an, an assault weapon is something that's fully automatic mm -hmm. uh, that, that can shoot hundreds of rounds a minute. Whereas, uh, if you load it that way, uh, but uh, what these AR-15s and uh, uh, are 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 they're uh, they're actually sporting rifles, and they are defensive rifles. You could use them for defense, and defense if against body, what, Phil? Uh, defense against the tyrannical government. How do you oh, uh, the tyrannical government. I see. Okay. And and also, uh, it, it turns out that the that the people who are causing an insurgence in this country don't happen to be who you thought they were. No, no. Uh, what was the guy's the name? Insurrectionist. Uh, got up the insurrectionist. Food store. What was his name? I, I don't know his name, and uh, it's a some, Ahmed yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Born in Syria. Yeah. Uh, and he was a mental case. Now, what 
uh, now they're saying that he was able to buy a gun. Look, how do I know? How do I know? Ago. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Forget all that. You're, you're going law-abiding. You're going sane. People have a right to the guns and whatever. Today's sane person is tomorrow's crazy person. Okay? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. So a guy buys it, and he's in good shape. His brain is okay. And a few years later, he suddenly goes wacko. Something happens. Something he, short circuits in his brain, and he goes into a shop, a supermarket, and shoots up a bunch of people. I well, mean, to, to assume that a person who buys a gun is sane. But quite frankly, I think anybody who buys guns is insane, but that's just yeah, my opinion. If they were smart, they would steal them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, we're going to go round and round on this. But no, we're not going to go round and round. I've, I have something to tell you, and it's very simple. Okay. You, Amer in the last uh, t uh, uh, seven days, less than that, actually, uh, I don't know when, the, I forget when the Atlanta thing happened, there are 18 people dead as the result of the free sale of guns. All right? Now, let me finish what I'm saying here. Apparently, you really law-abiding people, or you people out there, have been allowed to have guns, and you're not using them properly. And like any child who misuses a toy, I would take it away from him. Well, that guy isn't going to have one anymore. Uh, and neither is the guy in Atlanta. Uh, you know. Oh, well, there's two out of the way, but unfortunately they took 18 people with them. Well, you know that there has been, a, in a year, there was a million uh, defenses that saved lives of uh, people that ha were had guns, mm -hmm. and uh, they thwarted uh, issues. And now, you can look those statistics up. I believe it's in the D DOJ. I I'll get you the, uh, the the site, and you you'll see that you you cite this, which is a terrible thing. Uh, I mean, a, a Phil, terrible. These are, this, is, this isn't like some isolated incident. We have an no, incident like this at least once a month now. What would have happened if some of those people in the market happened to have been armed? Well, and then maybe a lot more people would be dead because they wouldn't aim right. Not necessarily. What if what if they were armed and they were able to stop uh, the thing after the first or second person died? Look, look at the lives that you're, are you're, you're, wait, a minute. You're, you're going a woulda, shoulda, coulda. The fact is that the fact oh, that they were armed doesn't mean they would necessarily have been able to save any lives. They might have been able to take the guy out eventually. But right. but 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 not before he had killed the people he was killing. He had already killed about six of those uh, ten people before anybody knew what was happening. Then four lives could have been saved. Oh, geez, Phil. You know, maybe then, maybe maybe ten lives could have been saved if they didn't sell assault rifles in Colorado, which should have learned their lesson a long time ago because they had a thing called Columbine. You know, Colorado. If you think about it, they have had a number of mass shootings, mm. Aurora, Columbine. But well, you before know, you go any further, I, I brought the wrong drink to, to use oh. tonight because look. Oh, <laughs> I see the label and, huh? and the cap. Yeah, you can see enough of it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. The Invisible Man. Yeah. Uh, the Invisible so, Drink. Yeah. If I do this, uh, it like goes away practically. Yeah. yeah very Anyways. Nice. What happens to the water? Uh, uh, now, the uh, the guy who shot Reagan, yeah. was that John Hinckley? Uh, uh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Which one shot? Uh, I, think, uh, I think it was Hinckley. He was the one with Jodie Foster, right? Yeah, uh, Yeah, I think so. Uh, which one shot John Lennon? Uh, that was, oh boy, what was his Not name? John Hinckley. No, his name was, uh, oh God. Somebody quickly um, on the on the chat room <laughs> come up with a name. I I am bad at names. The I always well, was bad at names. It's just now that I'm older, I'm even worse. Bad well, at Zoom names. is good because you have the names in each box. But yeah. uh, the uh, the thing about John Hinckley was that he traveled 1,600 miles from Colorado to uh, to shoot President Reagan. Mm -hmm. So. Colorado has a long history of uh, of shooters, mm -hmm. and maybe there's something in the water. Or maybe that, maybe it's the fact that guns are more easily available there than other places. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't know no. the Colorado. So when are you going to admit that maybe certain kinds of guns should be held back from sale? 
And yeah, the unstable you, you, people, you know, it, it, today's sane person is tomorrow's unstable person. Well, what what guns should be held off? The ones that shoot bullets? <laughs> what if we just make guns illegal and, and make bullets illegal but not the guns? All right, so we'll go to Japan and they'll do 2,000 <laughs> people with sarin gas. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the, Phil, Phil, you're looking at other case scenarios. It still does not, you, what you're doing is you're trying to make an argument for guns by saying other things could happen. And the fact is, uh, for instance, you say if, it, maybe there was somebody in that, in that uh, supermarket that had a gun on them. Good, good possibility, you know? And no, and he didn't take a, a shot at anybody. Didn't take action. Didn't take well, action. Uh, yeah. You know, it's we, in, in, in the you know, school the down guy, in the school down in Florida. You mm -hmm. actually had an armed guard there, and he he ran for the hills when everything was happening. You know? uh, yeah, he he didn't follow protocol. He set up a perimeter, and uh, and so he got fired. Uh, but you know, the the thing is. Yeah, I have a, a different opinion of, about firearms than you do. I believe that they save lives. Mm -hmm. uh, they save a lot more lives than they take. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I also believe that people should be highly trained. The next thing, mm -hmm. uh, since... You know, I'm going to run over a little bit here, folks, because I, uh, I got something uh, we're discussing here. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got uh, what's going on at the border. Now... Well, well maybe uh, we don't have time for that, but... Okay. Well, it's just you can't. Okay, play, you can't look, look. Look. The thing at the border uh, was always festering. I think that that uh, uh, it wasn't happening for a while because Trump just wasn't letting anybody in. Anybody. True. Okay. But what you, about uh, the? They're overpopulated by eight hundred percent. The facility is supposed to have two hundred and fifty people. I know. I, think it was I know. 4, it's a ter it's a terrible situation down there. And but the, I think one of the ways that that uh, 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 Biden is trying to handle is by prevailing on Mexico to not let people come over the border, right. you know, worse, and to take care of the problem on their end. And, you know, we don't want to turn away people who are especially children who we feel children need, need well, to be helped. What's happening is and you should excuse be upset us for our compassion. Yeah, compassion. What you're, what you should be upset about is mm -hmm. the fact that they won't let the news media in to photograph what's going on. And it was only one Democratic congressman from Texas that leaked some photos mm -hmm. uh, to show uh, exactly. I uh, don't know. I, I haven't heard a good reasoning yet for why they aren't letting the press in. My only argument back would be to protect the anonymity of the kids. That that no that would be one argument for it. Okay. That's a weak one. Because but, but I, think but I and, unless uh, you know, I mean, look, I think that Biden knows this is a problem. He's trying to solve it. He's only been in office six weeks. People saw that the coast was clear. They made a run for the border, right. uh, and then we we we've closed the border again. We've closed right. it. But you know, uh, not before a lot of people came through. And the fact was that all those holes in the wall was where they were coming through. Well, Harris, Harris was asked, she was in Florida, I think, but she was asked, are you going to go to the border? And she said, <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> you know? Harris. Uh, Harris, the vice president. Oh, Harris. Kamala Harris. She cackled and said, no, I'm not going today. Uh, you know, I mean, if you think that people aren't taking uh, taking it seriously and seeing the need look, for the compassion, look, 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 look. Harris is certainly look. This is certainly a bad situation, and I hope Biden solves it in the best way possible. Okay, um, we have a bunch of problems that have suddenly emerged. I think because certain people felt the coast was clear. Right. And they're going to have to find out that it isn't. That this is a president well, you know, who's going to be very tough on this stuff. The, the, the photos that that Democratic congressman leaked, all of the children that you could see their face mm -hmm. had those black uh, uh, lines across their eyes. So mm -hmm. that you couldn't. Uh, I think could, that's the reason, one of the reasons they didn't want the press in there. They just but wanted, you know. They, the press could have done that too, yeah, yeah. especially when you're dealing with juveniles. Hey, listen. I, I, I got people who want to come on here. Oh, what was the other uh, thing you wanted to hold over for for a second? No, that was that was it. The the thing on the border because that could that could 
go we could go 20 minutes on that one too yeah. you know all right uh, hey. but uh, but did you get you did you get a check at all from the government no uh not yet uh, uh I, I didn't you know uh, I, I think that they lowered the uh, the threshold. No, they, and, they didn't lower the threshold. It's one hundred sixty thousand for a couple. Well, but, I'm not married, but it has to be all pre tax money and pre whatever, and we're one hundred eighty thousand, so we're screwed. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, my salary is 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 high enough that with that and the social security, I don't think I'm going to get. Yeah. Or anyway, do, hey, listen, be- let's uh, let's talk to you again next week, okay? All right, and enjoy, I like, I and like, I'll let you know how my Fitbit's doing. Yeah, sure. Well, d- don't let it, uh, you, you should wear it now and then. That would help. Yeah, well, I, it just came. Uh, I, it was at the door when I came home. Oh, okay. By the way, the, the things come really fast through Amazon. I ordered uh, this uh, keyboard because my old one broke on me, yeah. and uh, I ordered it yesterday at the, uh, at the, uh, Seven o'clock at night and got it today at ten o'clock this Apple morning. Keep- no, no, no. It's for oh, the other. Okay. It's for the PC. I got the I got the Apple. Okay. Well, I got an Apple right here. See, it's not, yeah. yeah. Didn't I give you an Apple keyboard? Uh, I don't with- know. I don't know what you gave me. Didn't give. Yeah. Me. I'm uh, not, with that uh, but other- I'm not appreciative of any of it. So don't I know. About <laughs> it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, listen. I gotta go because these people are gonna be very mad at me if I don't. All right. You there. enjoy. Have a great show and okay. nice talking. Okay, to you. ladies and gentlemen, Phil Meyer. Thank you, Phil. We appreciate you uh, uh, talking with us. We uh, uh, certainly uh, want to, uh, um, let me see here, uh, uh, thank you for joining us on Mon- on Tuesdays because it gives me a little, nice little time to talk with somebody. I, I like Phil. I, I don't agree with him, you know, but I like Phil. He's a nice enough guy. Okay, okay. Anyway, I think it's time for us to admit all these people who have been waiting I have to, I guess, apologize to them. Uh, let me see here. Here they come. Look at that. There they are. Okay, we're. Yeah, looks like we're we're uh, going here. Yep. Uh, hello, Jeff. Hello, Alan. Hello, Brian. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Trucker Steve. Um. Uh, a- a- anything to say about what we were just talking about? Yes. Awesome. Huh? Yeah, guns. Guns? What were you saying about losing weight, Brian? I lost 10 pounds. Who lost 10 pounds? You did? Me. How'd you lose 10 pounds? <clears throat> you... Uh, one... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. One of those, one of those programs... They go on and uh, they give you the the meals, not meals, but they give you yeah. these uh, these fuelies that they call. They're just bars and shakes and all that stuff. So I said, what the heck? So I uh, I know a couple friends that lost a lot of weight on it. Mm-hmm. So I tried it and uh, it's been working out really good. Only been on it less than a week. Well, tomorrow's a week, a week yeah. now. So well, I would like to lose some now, but my problem is, I said, hey, I'm taking it to pregabalin, and it affects your metabolism. So I haven't taken it for about six days now, but I I, I don't feel that it's that I'm losing any real weight, you know. Uh, the See, way, my, my, way I'm going to lose weight is, is if I get out and go walking a lot more. Yeah. yeah, my problem is I just snack on foods all day. Oh, really? So this gives me something. They want you to eat one of these things. Six, so six of these, uh, uh, or one of these things, six times a day. Yeah. First half hour or the first hour you're up, one of them already, and that's perfect because I drive to work mm-hmm. and then set my alarm for every two and a half hours and eat one. And it's been going pretty good at the end. I have something that I'll mix vegetables with and yeah, it's working out really good. So yeah. I had bad food tonight. I had soup dumplings. I love soup dumplings. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was my cheat from Saturday. Actually, uh, they're not that, they're not that uh, full of carbohydrates. Uh, hmm. I think in the six that I buy, there's maybe 20, 25 carbohydrates, which isn't bad. Okay. But anyway, uh, uh, but uh, 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 hello, Robert. Alex, how are you? Lo- love your signage, filibuster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you disagree with him, as as do I. Yes. You know, 
And people should excuse if me if I drink my drink tonight and it's disappearing into the There's background. no drink in there, Alex. There's no drink in there. I'm no. just drinking Very air. Low calorie. Really low cal. Huh? Really low cal. Yeah. Well, I forgot. This is. I never should bring in the green one. I have an orange one and I have a red one, and they would do fine. But and I figured this might do okay, but it is kind of almost the same green as the green screen, so uh, so it disappears. So uh, when I drink and I hey, uh, huh what made by Kirkland says right on the label. Yeah, it is Kirkland. Yeah, yeah. Turn your mic down just a little bit, Alan. Again, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lost 120 pounds when I broke up with my girlfriend. Yeah, I know. Ah. I, I, boom. But a bum bum. My joke yeah, was I followed I, the yeah. whole saga. I followed I, the whole saga. I lost. That's when I was listening last night. You were you moved to Arizona. I called the show again, and then yeah. you're there for a little while, and then you moved back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And and you moved there for a girlfriend, right? Yep. Yeah. So you got rid of 120 pounds of ugly fat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't regret Be nice. That no, that's the joke actually. I yeah, lost 120 yeah, pounds of ugly yeah. fat. I divorced my wife. But um boom. <laughs> you know. She wasn't ugly fat, so. Yeah, yeah so be nice. <laughs> I agree, Charlie. I've yeah. seen her back. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I uh, uh I am I, I don't know, I'm just exhausted again lately. I don't know what it is. But we got Tell us, Charlie, what's the count and the amount right now? Uh, sign, sign, Robert. Come on. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold He's on. Lagging. Hold on. Oh man, hey, this, this is very disappointing. Here we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doctor Doom. Five hundred forty-three thousand seven hundred forty-one dead Americans so far. We're almost to thirty million COVID cases. Oh jeez. How oh. many yesterday died? How many yesterday? Oh, just just eight hundred sixty-nine. First time in a long time it's under a thousand. Wow. That's... Yeah, but I think that's going to change. Yeah, because the number of, of, of cases is going up, and there's always a lag. Yeah, I mean, you've got your cases. Then you've got your cases that get uh, into ICUs. Then you've got your cases, and those ICUs are intubated. And then 80% of the people who are intubated die. Mm -hmm. And that that's all mm -hmm. takes place over a period of time. So, you know, you may see the numbers in hospitalizations go down, and that's fine, but that doesn't mean that you haven't got a backlog of people waiting to, well, so we say die. You know, yeah. so it's yeah, not man. pretty. And then we got the whole thing going on down in Florida. Have you seen that mess down yeah. there? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, if, if, this, if this was really spreading with the younger groups, I think we'd have no younger generation left. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, it does spread to the younger people. They have they do die of it. Sure, but not not as bad as the yeah. elderly as the, the as immune system. Not as badly, younger, but so. you know, you know, I it is I guess when I was younger I was selfish too. I don't know. But if I knew that my actions could kill my grandparents, I think I'd be very careful about what I did. Okay? I that, that I'm responsible for other people as well in this world. And these kids don't seem to think they have any responsibility to their parents or anybody else. So they go down to Florida. They go all infect each other. Some of them come back with it. They don't get it badly, but then they pass it on to their parents, their grandparents, and everybody else who they hug when they come home. They don't understand. That's the nature of this whole thing. Just because you can't get it doesn't mean that you can't give it to somebody else. You know. But were you like that when you were a kid, Robert? Were you selfish and self-absorbed? No. no. Neither was I. No. I lived in a home with parents and grandparents, and I was... Mm. I was just heavily respectful of my grandparents. I love them both dearly. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, we noticed Trucker Steve is not in the truck tonight. Trucker Steve is at home, I assume, right, Trucker Steve? Yeah. Yeah, and how long are you home for this time? Uh, till Friday. Till Friday and is back on the road again. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you, you like that life, don't you? Yeah, uh, you getting tired of it? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and how does your wife feel about it? It's a job. It's a job. Pay the bills. It, yeah, pays the bills. Well, at least during this whole COVID thing, you're working, and that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, is business up or business down? It's normal. Normal. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And how's everything up in Connecticut, Jeff? Well, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> And I actually got on my bicycle, did a little bike around, mm -hmm. realized uh, the bike needs a little oil and this and that to get it running. Perfect. Yeah. That's, uh, that's been the day. I find that? that when I get on the Peloton here, I need a little oil. So it's, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, I guess so. I'm old, get it? Yeah, got we it. got it. We got it. Yeah, we we all got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm. Uh, but I've just been exhausted. I don't know why. Today I'm exhausted again, and there's no reason for it. You know. That 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 reminds me of the old Groucho Marx bit. Remember, he goes into a drugstore and he asks a young lady for talcum powder, and she goes sashaying away, swinging her hips seductively. And Groucho says, "If I could walk that way, I wouldn't need talcum powder." <laughs> <laughs> well, or it's the old joke about the sexy woman in the, who's in a store. And, uh, he says, can you tell me where I can find blah, blah, blah. And the woman says, walk this way. He says, if I could walk that way. <laughs> da, da, da. That's the other version of the same That's joke. That's the other version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I, you know, I mean, uh, I just, I'm, I don't know why I'm tired again. I, I, for a while, I was getting over my tiredness. I don't know why, and then all of a sudden it's back again. So, hmm. of course, we have the pollen count is now up, and yeah. and so I have, I take an allergy pill that says non drowsy. You ever take a non drowsy medication? Yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah. No. How drowsy do you get with a non drowsy medication? Somewhat, sometimes. Some, it some, varies from person to person. Somewhat, somewhat, a lot, a lot drowsy. So anyway, so so I have that in me too. So if I fall asleep while we're doing the show, it's just because I find it as boring as you do. So anyway, um, you know, I was talking with Phil about about. <laughs> and I can't even fight him. Uh, so, so based on what I learned in the filibuster, in the filibuster, the the, guns the Tuesday save filibuster, more people than they than they take yes, away. Yes, right. So, based on right. that logic, right. Tomorrow, I'm calling Kim Jong Un, and I'm going to buy a nuclear weapon. This way, I can save a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That cop had a gun. Yes. Yeah. What good did it do him? Yeah, uh, and uh, you know he he's. He, he's being uh, uh, lionized today for having done, really, his job, which he did yeah. well. You know, he did what he had to do. And it was uh, very sad that, that, you know, he was the only one that ran in there, that he was the only cop available. There might have been, he might be alive now mm -hmm. if there were more. He might uh, be alive if the guy hadn't had an AR-15, too. But yeah. you know the thing they keep, they keep making a big deal about, and, and I think it's... It, I, I don't know. I get bothered by it sometimes when they say this. Do you know how many kids he had? Seven. Seven kids. Now, on uh, one hand, on one hand, I feel very sorry for that family because there are seven kids without a father now. But they didn't have to be seven kids without a father if he'd use a condom a little more often. <laughs> you know, I mean that that part bothers me is that he had seven kids. You know, I mean, I think that... Well, the part that bothers me is he believes in Jesus Christ, so there you go. Oh, okay, did he really? <laughs> His father put out a statement. Yeah, yeah. And that was the last part of the statement. Hey, well, he listen, you know something? I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm a, I'm a very anti-religion, and I'm very, uh, very much an atheist or agnostic, or I think an atheist. Uh, and, and I... You know, I, though, feel somewhat jealous for those people who believe in God. Because I have a great fear of death. They don't. Because they feel I they're mean, going to a better place. 
and I'm feeling I'm going to an empty hole in the ground, you know, that oh, I'm going to fill and uh, be eaten by worms. So <laughs> maggots, maggots. Unless my, unless maybe Marjorie wants to wants to cremate me. She already has plans for me now. Yeah. What do There's I have? Too much wasted land in New York with coffins in it. Well, that that's true. That's true. Uh, and I I agree with you on that one. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Even though it's against the religion, I I'm okay with being cremated. Is it against the Jewish religion? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, and you can't be embalmed either. That's why they bury Jews so quickly, <laughs> so they can get away from the smell. Is that? The reason Christian and those afraid of death. Actually, I don't know, really. actually, the Muslim, the Jews bury their dead within two days. Yeah, they don't uh, but do I heard the anything. reason was is that they felt oh. the faster you buried the person, the faster the family right. could get back to a certain amount of normalcy. That as long as that body is around, you <clears throat> you're still in the grieving process. The yeah. healing starts happening once the hole is filled. Okay. But um, the is, Islamics bury theirs within 24 hours, okay? So they're much quicker than we are. Now, I had, a, I had a, a woman who was a producer for me whose grandmother died in San Francisco when there was a uh, cemetery workers' strike, and it went on for four weeks. And her grandmother laid there in cold storage oh. for four weeks. You know, that's 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 a problem. Uh, we're you know the past year a lot of people were laying in cold storage for weeks because they yeah you know, the mortuaries can't keep up. With it. Yeah, yeah. If if Marjorie does cremate you, hmm. I think the way to go is that each one of us here gets to keep your ashes for say a couple of days, a little like the Stanley <laughs> Cup, you know. We, we could each have your ashes and say, see this guy? He used to be a big shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You like that. oh, oh, yeah. Put put that down, Charlie. <laughs> that on the list. Pam, uh, Pam has a crazy idea, like when she's going to die. Yeah. She wants to go to Maine because the family has a little island thing. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna throw her in the water. You mean the whole body? Yeah, in the ocean. Whoosh. Goodbye, Pam. Donating my body to science. Can you do that? I mean, are you allowed to do that? Probably no, not. But out in Maine, who the hell's gonna stop her? The well, crabs will eat her. Yeah, <laughs> lobsters. Some eat. fish. So yeah, some lobster yeah, fishermen are gonna be in for horrible. a big surprise. Yeah. You know. Well, we got our lobsters and this. Yeah, maybe we'll put a, a, a weight on her so she goes. You got this all worked out, have you, uh, Jeff? <laughs> You're going to wait till she's dead, though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I did. Just to make but sure. This is not my strategy. Put a mirror up to her face this just to make sure. Stuff, okay? Jeff, Jeff, yeah. you, better, you better have her write this down and sign it because if they see you dumping a body off a boat, you're gone. <laughs> and Jeff, make sure she leaves you with the sound on on your computer before she goes. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here comes Kevin. He's just going to be locked up. They, he stole a car and he dumped his wife off the yeah. side of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. There's Kevin. Hello, Hello. Kevin. How are you? Hey, Alex. How are you yeah. doing? How's everybody doing? So the the okay. waiting hey, good. of the body I'm... only works for a short time. What? What, what did Waiting you of the body, you know, like tie a chain and hang a weight from the body, mm -hmm. only works for a short time. What, what, uh, what, what? Unfortunately, unfortunately, in the water, the body decomposes, you and blow. yep, and it 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 ends up ballooning and it floats. Uh, there was a, there was a, there was a former um, the former uh, what do you call it the coroner him, the city of the city of New York uh, doctor he was the guy that testified in the OJ trial I'm trying to remember his name now what happened to Al Capone what was it Al Capone like under the the uh, foundation of one of the bridges out there no 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 not Al Capone oh, Capone died in uh, in Alcatraz 
Oh, well then, which one of the? Hoffa. You're thinking about Hoffa. 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 That's what I'm thinking. I heard he was a he was the end zone in some, in some football field. Yeah, somewhere. Giants. Yeah. Life Giants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, New York Giants. Okay. Yeah, I get I get my uh, bad guys mixed up. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it's an easy thing to do, but yeah. I um um the, the thing I, I'm thinking of is that. Uh, if you we wait, so you can't weight the body down because it's going to start floating. Oh, so I had this guy I knew who was the coroner of the city of New York. He was the guy who testified in the OJ trial. Um, I'm trying to remember his name now. He did a bunch of shows on HBO about, you know, the dead talk, you know, and he how he can tell how somebody died and so on and so forth. His name started with a B, I think, but I can't remember right now. See, my mind. He's a good friend, obviously. No, he, no I had lunch with him, with, with Al Goldstein, oddly enough. Al Goldstein would hold oh. these lunches, and he came there. And he and I got to talking, and he talked about, uh, you know what we call April, the coroner's office? And I said, no. He says, floater's month. Uh. Because what happens is it gets warm enough in April that all the people who were dropped in the East River during the winter who sunk to the bottom because they froze and the free you know when they were all frozen they sunk to the bottom but then when the water warms up the bodies all come floating to the top and they find them so they call it floaters month so there was a, a famous case in the bay area 10 years ago scott peterson he's mm -hmm. in prison for it yeah uh, killed his wife and the unborn baby yep took, took him out and uh uh, if you want details, contact Phil because he was—he's a forensic diver. And uh, Phil's a forensic diver. Absolutely, certified. Yep. Really? Yeah. How many forensics does oh, he come God. up with? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. What? What? Somebody said something. Robert. What'd you say? No, I was just kidding. I said, how oh. many forensics does he come up with? Yeah. I don't know. He goes diving for forensics. Yeah. That's sarcasm. Yeah. Okay. This guy that testified in the OJ trial has this long Indian name. No, 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 no. That's not <laughs> That's the guy. That's what it says here. No. Huh? Baden. Baden. Michael Baden. Ba Michael Baden. Ba oh, Michael, Michael Baden. Michael Baden. Yeah. yeah. He's a Jew. Yeah. And he, uh, he, he was the one that told me about Floaters Month. He was the, the coroner to the rich and famous. It, well, he, they after he was no longer the coroner of New York, he started doing independent coroner stuff. The, you ho know. the Hollywood um, coroner was Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi. Yeah. Yeah. He was no, the, Tom Yamaguchi. No, not Tom Yamaguchi. <laughs> <laughs> was it Yamaguchi or was it... Something like that. I think, that's I think it was another name. I don't think it was Yamaguchi. I think Annie I'm, Sprinkle, I think. Annie <laughs> Sprinkle. <laughs> Yeah, who, as we all know, is dead, according to John Larkin. <coughs> Got her mixed up with Margot St. James. Oh, Mar oh Margot. I saw Margot a couple of years ago. She's dead now, too, huh? Margot yeah. Kidder? Are you sure she's the one that's dead? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because she was very close to Annie Sprinkle. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. why I got him confused. Nobody knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Be nice to Larkin. He's the only one that dresses up for the show. Yeah, he does. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm impressed. Well, I'm all dressed. Well, I got my pajamas on. <laughs> These aren't pajamas really so much as what I wear all the time at home. You know, Marjorie, in fact, has gone, goes to work twice a week now, and she's wearing jeans to work. And she says, do you know I have not worn any of my dresses in a year? Because you just, you lose all yeah. desire for, uh, you know, for fashion. During a, we've learned a lot during this whole thing, you know. It's really made us take a different perspective of life. So to clarify things, yeah. Bill sent me a text. He was in the bay when the when the baby Peterson's baby was found, and he had to go to, into the marsh to get a GPS location. Oh, okay. Where the baby was found. All right, but, but he was he was scuba diving. He was scuba so diving, but he was. He, but it, it was just that he was scuba diving like he normally scuba dives, right? Yeah, yeah. 
I guess. I don't know. I don't know anything about scuba diving. People yeah. can go underwater. They can breathe underwater. That's all yeah. I know. Well, I know that Robert would like him to breathe underwater, but without the scuba gear. Oh. 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 That's Here's cool. the mm. <laughs> Sarcasm. Sarcasm. Oh, boy. It's 50% truth. <laughs> That's right. Are you He's trying to be human? Oh, I'm going to make up some signs here. Then I can compete. You said that last week. You, you keep threatening this. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't have the time or the inclination. Humor. Okay. I'll, I'll just make one that just says, fuck y'all. You know, anyway. Uh, uh, but, you know, we were, we were talking about just the whole thing with the guns. And, I mean, you're, you're pro-gun, right? Alan? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you agree with what Phil said? Yes. It, in which he stated that he felt that... Um, uh, that properly trained, not, you know, properly trained citizens should be able to own guns. Yeah, but you're yes. saying properly trained. You're, you're not taking into account... We're not talking about the people who would want to be properly trained... They're not going to walk into a supermarket and kill 10 people. What we're talking about is availability of guns. Am I right, yeah, Robert? Yeah. This is what we're Lee talking about. Lee Harvey Oswald right. was properly trained, as yeah. I recall. Yeah. 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 He was a marksman in the Marines. And so yeah. what do we do with that? Who's that? Lee, Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald. Oswald. Oh, you really? Oh, well, well there you go. Star. He you know. was properly trained. He was a Marine. Yeah, he was. Yeah, we also have a lot of people that come back who who have uh, P uh, PTSD, who come back and do these kind of actions, and they're trained Absolutely. killers. We trained them how to kill. You know, so, I mean, when you say, oh, well, you know, we got to train people how to use them properly. Well, that's fine. You can do that all you want to. Those are not the people that are going to get the guns and go into a supermarket and shoot people. What we yeah. want to do is make the availability of some of these, these... If this guy had only had a pistol, he probably would not have killed 10 people. He wouldn't have done it fast enough. How, how far along would I get if I made the argument that opioids weren't the problem, that proper training on the use of opioids were the problem. I would get thrown out on my ass yeah, and yeah. I would be told, you're out of your mind. It isn't a matter of the proper use. It's a matter of that some people shouldn't ought to be with a firearm. Yeah. Listen, I you agree. can get a firearm in Georgia as Quick as that, but you can't vote. You see, I mean, I, I, along with that. I, I know that Alan, for instance, is a responsible gun user. I'm not worried about him right now. But what's to say he doesn't become unhinged at some point? Listen, I could become unhinged tomorrow at some point. Now, I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> no, I don't but, see But, you it. know, it can happen. All of a sudden, you... It could happen with anybody. Happen, happen with anybody. And now he has the avail availability of how many weapons do you have in your house right now, Alan? A couple. Just a couple. Yeah, I think I own four firearms. Oh, really? Well, that's four more than I have. Four more than yeah. Jeff has. About well, one-tenth of what Bill has. I, yeah, really. That's what <laughs> I was going to say. I don't think. Do you have any, Robert? Do you have any? I've never touched a firearm. Yeah, I, really? won't, I won't even let him near me. You weren't in they the military, me. Robert? No, I was not. Oh, okay. I was in the military. I was forced to shoot a rifle. I became, they, they rated me as a marksman, said I was very good, and I was terrific, and that's the last time I ever touched a gun. You know, and that was only because I had to. You know, uh, but I, I, I just feel that, you know, you say, well, responsible people, you know, you got to make sure responsible people, you can't guarantee that. And no. what the hell do we need assault weapons sitting out there for? Here okay. was the other part of the filibuster that just drove me over the edge. Yeah. Well, the nation has a problem with mental illness, and the government has to do a better job with mental illness. All right, so I was in the education field for a time. What do you expect me to do about it? What do you expect the government to do about it? 
Should we give mental health checks to 350 million Americans and then again next week because circumstances may have changed? How exactly do I, we identify these people? Second of all, he was in law enforcement. The subject of crimes of passion have never crossed his desk or his mind at any point. You know, have he, has he not heard the term that it can make someone like me who's never touched a gun, perhaps at a certain point, you know, lose my marbles. And if I have this sign or I have a gun, which is more likely to cause a problem? You know, it, it again, if my son, when he was three, mm -hmm. hit a kid across the street with a rock, I wouldn't blame the rock. I'd blame my son, but I would make sure I took away the rock. You know, it's just common sense. Well, what I've said is I think by now we should realize that we in this country are not capable of having the kind of freedom in gun laws that we believe we have the right to have. Uh, I don't think when the Constitution was written, our founding fathers, if they had known that assault rifles existed back then, they might have made an exception to that amendment, Okay. It was just that that amendment was made because, uh, hey, you know, uh, the uh, the British government might come back and try and take over the country, and you've got to get, have the right to be able to bear arms so that you can go and fight them, uh, because you, you're you're a militia. You're not a you're not an army. You're nothing else. You're a militia, and we call out the militia, and everybody goes out and defends the country from the British. All right, that makes all makes sense. But that was three. How many fucking years ago? About 300 years ago? Going on. He, going on? Yeah. 250 plus. Huh? 250 plus years ago. They were written for another time, and they did not include these kinds of weapons. They were not referring to this kind of weapon. They were referring to flintlocks, for crying out loud, which you had to jam down a thing and put the ball in there and put the flint in, and then you could fire one shot, and then you had to do it again. They didn't know from guns which, you know, had could shoot off 100 rounds in two minutes, you know. Yeah. And, and that being the case, do we really apply that Second Amendment to these kinds of weapons, you know? I'm all for I'm all for letting people have flintlocks, you know. We can't have this discussion in America, not legitimately, mm -hmm. until we understand the following: Republicans aren't in favor of the Second Amendment. If you think so, you're a fool. Republicans are in favor of money from the NRA yeah. and from gun manufacturers. If you don't get to the heart of that, you won't understand the problem because. The vast majority of the American people want some measure of gun control, be it background checks, be it reducing the number of uh, the number of bullets that a weapon can hold. I don't even know the nomenclature. Mm -hmm. Assault rifles, which yeah. you don't use to go out and shoot a fucking deer. You know, like Americans, for the most part, are in favor of these kind of restrictions. Not a soul has ever come forward to say, take away all guns. But Ted Cruz is on the air today saying that this is an attempt to disarm all Americans. That's the boogeyman that gun holders always latch on to and say, see, see. Of course, in 250 years of our history, that's never happened. Not once. Not once. You know, on our, on our, on our Monday show, we have a guy in Canada who calls the show. I wish he were calling right now because in Canada he could explain what... Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Trucker Steve. Trucker Steve is from yeah, Canada. Yeah, from Canada. Trucker Steve, why is it per capita you have as many guns there as we have here with a minimal amount of gun crime and, and, and murders and deaths? Uh, I don't know, probably because there's less people. Or... No, but this is per capita. This is per capita. Yeah. You know, you have the same amount of guns per capita. In fact, you may have more per capita than we have yeah. here, although I doubt it. Because, I mean, there's how many, it's at least one gun for every human being in America. I think maybe two. I think it's yeah. more. Yeah. More. Um, 
you know, I mean, it, it, I just don't understand. Uh, well, I understand America is gun nutty. That's the problem, you know, and they look upon it as the solution to everything. I mean, I saw a thing where there was an MMA, it was an MMA or mixed martial arts uh, thing going on down in Miami. And there was a break and some people got into a fight and a guy pulled out a gun and shot it straight up in the air to try and stop everybody from fighting. Well, he didn't know there couldn't be somebody upstairs, yeah. right? You know, but all of a sudden a gun was pulled out. I mean, out of nowhere. I mean, it's just ridiculous the kind of permeation of weapons into this culture. And we and this we cherish this more than we cherish the freedom of speech in this country or the freedom to assemble or any of those things. With a free, you you fight those things, try and make laws about them. People won't argue as much as the people who are yelling. I don't take my guns away from me. Come on, how about how grow about up? You don't need a gun. How about the theory that without the Second Amendment, the First Amendment wouldn't exist? Oh, uh, stop. Oh, that's oh, bullshit. Stop. It's bullshit. Oh, stop. Listen, okay. my graduate work was in American government and the Constitution. And for every Second Amendment article you can find, I can find three from noted scholars who claim that the Second Amendment has been misinterpreted from the very beginning. That the idea yeah, was they were afraid that the government, the newly formed government of America, would turn into much like they faced with King George III and take away all individual rights. Therefore, the Second Amendment, they claim, and I, sub I subscribe to, yeah. was put in so that people could take arms against a tyrannical government. Well, the only tyranny I've seen out of government in the past however many years was Trump's people storming the Capitol. Yeah. Having weapons would have made a bit of difference. You know, it's all bullshit. It's based on bullshit. Yeah. I mean, it, it, this, it, this it, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. There are other countries that have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, all the freedoms that we have, England being one of them. And yes. uh, they don't allow guns. And they, they have never made a big deal, uh, you know, they, they're as free as any other country. We, we have the idea that our, you know, so therefore the, the Second Amendment does not protect the First Amendment, I don't think, in any way, shape, or form. Now, you might argue that's how you enforce it, you know, well, no. When, where? Give yeah. me an example. When do we need it? When do Give we need guns example. to protect our yeah. freedom of speech? The, well, the theory is... Yeah. Is Let's take the other approach. <laughs> the, the other person's approach is, I need a gun because you may have a gun and you may want to shoot me, and mm -hmm. therefore I want to have a gun that is even better than you so I can shoot you twice before you even get shoot me once. And where does it stop? Doesn't now I stop. need a gun that can shoot you three times before well, you can shoot me twice you know that's why people but you know well, well, i agree I mean, with you Jeff. Took about 30 years ago these kind of guns that we're talking about today didn't exist i agree it, it, you well, know, well, my, my question would be and, and this is you know i think it's an important question and that is if we're going to talk in terms of having the right to bear arms okay um where does that stop? I mean, how do you infringe on my right to bear arms and you don't let me own a nuclear weapon? A bazooka. A, a bazooka. Yeah. You know, any of those? Eight laws. Things. Oh, huh? eight laws. Tank. Well, you know, I mean, California versus Texas. Texas is obviously a lot more liberal when it comes to guns. Mm -hmm. you, you made a point. Somebody made a point in Georgia and Texas. You can walk into a gun store, put your driver's license on the counter, in your credit card and leave with a fully automatic uh, type machine gun and ammo and everything and go on a killing spree. Yeah. California, you can't do that. First of all, machine guns are illegal unless you have a special permit, military police, that type of thing. And so how do we, how do we, how do we, Alan, how do we go 
from saying it's not okay to have a machine gun, but it's okay to have an assault weapon. What's the difference? What's the difference? They're it's just massive pull. repeating... Trigger pull is yeah. the difference. Uh, machine gun, you pull the trigger once and it empties the magazine if you keep it held. Trigger pull is, you know, for every every trigger pull, you get a you get a, a shot, and until the magazine's empty, if you if need be or not. So I, I can't think you the, make those so they repeat? Can't you jimmy rig them so they repeat? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess it's not. Oh, okay, that, so that, once that you've got once you've got the assault you. weapon, you have the ability to do that. Uh, Kevin, you don't own a weapon, do you, or did you say you owned one? No, I don't have one. Uh, turn your mic up a little bit here. No, I don't have one, no. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, now, what's your feeling on on this whole subject? Assault weapons aren't needed, but, uh, you know, for hunting and that sort of thing, I don't see what the problem is, but it's a long, long, long debate that we've had over the years, and it's not going to go away. Well, the thing is that I feel is that... Uh, uh, the ability to have a gun, if you live out in the woods where there are varmints and so on, could be argued that you need at least a rifle or something like that because you it bears and so on that might come and attack you. You need the ability to Mountain lions. Yourself. Huh? Mountain, Mountain lions. Mountain lions. Yeah. But how many, you know, I live in New York City, so I don't yeah. need one of these. I mean, the last time I had to put up with a bear... It was a big iron one down at Wall Street, you know. <laughs> he was a mean son of a bitch. He was a mean son of a bitch, is right. But, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's like you're saying, Kevin. I'm not a hunter. Hmm? I'm not for fully automatic weapons. I am for background checks. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you know? I do agree. I do agree that people who live up in the mountains, out in the woods, live in areas with varmints and so on, need it as a tool, okay, and as a matter of safety against animals, certain animals. You take a, you take a bear, he can wipe you out pretty goddamn fast, you yep. know. Yeah. So you need that kind of protection out in the woods. But yeah. I don't see that you need it uh, in, uh, you yeah. know, where was it, Aurora, Colorado? Where did this thing happen? Boulder. Boulder, Boulder. Colorado. Boulder. Yeah. Uh, I mean, why? You know, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, well, most of these people that have the guns, you know, yeah. in the cities are expecting something to happen, and that's why they have them. Yeah, they're expecting, you know, they're building militias and they're expecting something to happen, like uh, an insurrection, or you know, they're planning their militias that something's going to happen and they're going to be ready for it. That's why they have. Well, them. don't we call that a mob? We call that a mob. We call it a militia. We call it a gang. You know? <laughs> a gang, yeah. Uh, yes, Jeff had his hand up, and then yeah. Kev, then oh, Kevin. I was going to say, as, as far as a bear goes, <clears throat> we see one pretty much at a certain part uh, every year when they wake up. You know, they they sleep and then they yeah they wake up and they're very hungry. And if you got uh, any kind of flowers or anything. They're going to take your flowers. Yeah. They They're also going to go take your garbage, too. Those guys are great. Yeah. Those guys but are great you know at what? rifling through garbage. You don't have to garbage. kill them. Huh? They're, you don't have to kill them. No, but I'm saying that in certain areas of the country, there are very dangerous bears, uh, as an example, or mountain lions or whatever. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. And that, that I can see having a gun in that atmosphere as a protection against varmints. Okay, putting it the best way possible. Um, but, you know, in my whole life, I've got to tell you, I've never had my apartment robbed. You know, I've never been attacked by anybody. My life has never been in danger from another human being, except for the time when that guy held a gun at my head for an hour in my face uh, when I was a kid. What are, what are friends for? What are friends for, exactly. Uh, you know... So I, I can't say that I've ever had a need for one. And if I did have a need for one, I will just get on my cell phone and call the cops. Right. They and carry they, the gun for okay. me. They carry the gun for me. There you, you know? go. 
and and they're supposed to be responsible, although there's some question at that, you know, whether okay. whether every like you can't guarantee that every cop on the force is uh, all put together just right so that he can wield a gun. Same, same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. You know, uh, and mm -hmm. as hard as police departments try to make sure these people don't get on the force, they still squeak through. Uh, uh, to me, it's saying is, is one thing. I think you, you'll find, and I think everybody probably agree here, that you find a lot more police officers in this country that are racist and not a matter. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that a cop, I, I, I'm saying that if, you know, if a racist cop's out there and he has the choice between shooting a black man or a white man, he's going to take the black man. But I think most police officers, probably 99% of them, are good, honest people. Let me ask you this, though. Let job. me ask you this. I have argued for the longest time to bring back the beat cop. And the reason I say that is, is that the trouble with police is they've gotten to a point where all they do is they drive around that police car all day. Go from they, call to call. Yep. Yeah, and every time they get out of that car, it is because there's some kind of problem. Okay, so they get an attitude of the world out there and the world inside the police car. And then they become buddies with each other. Mm -hmm. And in the old days, you used to have a cop. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze here any second. <laughs> Let me just uh, try to keep myself from sneezing. It's the allergies. Uh, that uh, it, when I was a kid, there was a beat cop. Okay? And, but then they, and, then and, they and, developed wait, cars. Wait, 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 wait a minute. The beat cop became friends with the neighbors. He some most of the time lived in that neighborhood, and he he all the people like I knew the cop on my beat when I was a little kid. You know, hi officer so and so, and he was always there every day walking the beat, and so he had contact every day with the people out there. So he didn't think that every time he went in somewhere, it was a it was a it was a it was a bad situation. Now they get the idea that the world out there is ugly and the world inside the cop car is the only sane thing. And they get this, this bad perception about the rest of the world. And I think that's why we have trouble with cops. Put them back on the beat. Put them out on the street talking to the neighbors and being a part of that neighborhood. I think you would change a lot of it. I would change a sure. lot of that police. Uh, I think you're probably right. Yeah. yeah. And it only takes tax money to hire more police officers to get them out of the car. Or we take or, the cars or away changing, and put them out. Or changing the, policies you can take in, the cops in cities and, where you can do it. You can take the cops that already exist and let them walk the walk the beat. I mean, I think they've got to have, the beat cops have to have a better attitude. Yes, Robert. I think John was ahead of me, actually. Uh, John? Yeah, yeah. Here in the Tenderloin, they do that. You know, they have the cops walking around, but... They're just overwhelmed. There's just so many homeless and drug addicts and, you know, riffraff on the street. There's, you know, there's, a, you know, they'll walk down one block and they'll all, you'll see them all walk around the corner and go to the next block. It's just, you know. Yeah. So. It's, there's another phenomenon which I can speak to in education. Perhaps, Alan, you feel the same way in police work where um, things get top heavy. The reason is that teachers, after a time, don't want to be in the classroom you know, wiping snotty noses anymore. They want some level of advancement. Okay. And the advancement turn into supervisory kinds of, in the case of police, maybe plain clothes activity and so on and so forth, because it's not really the best job of all to be down in the, in the trenches, you know, either walking the beat in your case, or in my case, being in a self-contained second grade, you know, with, with kids that have have uh, poor language skills because they're from all, all over the world and so forth. So what happens is there's sort of like a top heaviness to a lot of school districts where there are far more supervisors than there. You know, like there's a lot of guys watching the guy dig the hole, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, as a result, it pulls people away from being in the classroom or walking the beat or, you know, going chasing the yeah. fire down the block or whatever. Kind happened. of the Peter principle. Exactly, yeah. Well, let me just ask. Happened to me. Let me, let me ask Alan yeah. this. Alan, when you were a policeman, you, you were a cop, uh, did you work out of a car or did you walk the beat? Well, in the city I am, uh, they don't have walking beats. 
it's a big city and they have 150 cops and so car yeah car and so, i worked detective work for a while too, but would you agree with my philosophy that if they were out on the street they would have a better attitude about the public they well, serve yeah i don't know i i, I think they, they they have a better idea what's going on in the neighborhood mm -hmm. you know um although you know um uh, you know, a cop that works a certain beat, I don't know about New York, but here in Fremont, it's not, you know, 7 million people in their beat or, or something like that. And so a cop in this area mm -hmm. uh, patrols a certain area, and if an unusual car is around somebody's house or something, they usually know it. Anybody um, here have something they want to say on this topic that we haven't touched on at all? Yes, Brian. About 10 minutes ago. So, oh. no, but what, you're, what, you're, what, you're, what you were talking about before are bump stops. Those are the ones that can make the automatic or the, the, the single shot more automatic. But that's what they used. The guy used in the, the Vegas. In Las Vegas. When yeah. He was up, yeah. yeah, when he was up in the hotel, when they found his stuff, he had a bunch of bump stops. So they're all illegal. Yeah. And then the animal stuff, you know, the bears and stuff. You know, Charlie, when, when, uh, when we get out of COVID, he's going to be looking for some cougars. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I should do? I should make available. I think what I can do is I can make available. I'm going to go look later. A thing so that you can actually, it puts in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it puts in the corner your a raised hand so I can see when you want to talk. Because sometimes I don't see it. Uh, because I'm sitting here doing everything else and then mm -hmm. somebody raises their hand and I don't notice it. And, and so okay, I'm just giving you a hard time. Hmm? No, I'm, I'm just not. giving you a hard time. No, I'll, I'll, please don't. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, not to change the subject, but did you guys hear what the latest, uh, the lady, the, the Kraken lawyer, what she's saying now, you, you know, the Trump's, uh, the Kraken lawyer, the one that was saying all that bullshit about the, and she's being sued now by dominion. Yeah. So her defense, yeah. her defense, I don't know if you've heard this yeah. is that nobody could have actually believed, believed what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can't I love make it. this shit up. The fucking gall. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? She's Unbelievable. So, that's so stupid. Um, I, I, you know, there's, there's, there's a chance there's been talk that they, they're thinking of indicting Trump and insurrection charges. Yeah. I mean, there is that possibility. Uh, I, I don't see why he's not in jail already. Fuck, it was no. obvious. Well... The rich never go to jail. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I remember I was watching this uh, new new Justice League film, which is terrible. And at one point, they look over at Bruce Wayne, who's Batman, and says, "What's your superpower?" He says, "I'm rich." <laughs> you know, and it's true. Your superpower can be well, that you're you know, rich. Wealthy people in this country can afford better quality lawyers than public defenders. Exactly. exactly. And that usually. You know, if you stand a chance of staying out of jail, yep. that's your best chance. Hey, Jeff, great having you here tonight. Same no, thing no, with no. you, Alan. You're Thanks. Supposed to give us an extra five minutes that you gave Phil. Uh, well, then I have to take five minutes away from Jack, and Jack will have to take oh. it away from dead air. Uh, oh, okay. uh, 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 yeah, uh, and uh, Trucker Steve, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you being here. Didn't get to your questions tonight, but I know you have them. Yes, filibuster. I, I like that. That's cute. Yes, That's cute. and uh, let me see here. Uh, yes, uh, John Larkin, and of course Kevin. Always love seeing you here because you make it just right. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is on next, and he'll be creating a whole new citizen panel. You'll be doing it on Skype, and the number to call is GabNet Live. Uh, let me see here. Tomorrow night we got a sports show. I can't remember. Does it go on now? It depends on when he decides to play. It goes on at either 8.30 or 9 o'clock, but you can also listen to it as it goes around and around or go to our on-demand line to see it. It's a good little sports show, and I know nothing about sports, but it sounds fine to me. Anyway, and then I'll be back again tomorrow night, 10.30, same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask. Bye, everybody.